Ring has moved one step closer to becoming a new HIV prevention method for women in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, this comes after a European regulatory body gave the Dapivirin vaginal ring the green light. Now, research has shown that the vaginal ring reduces the chances of HIV prevention by 35% in women. Now, this ring contains the antiretroviral Dapivirin, which is released over a period of a month. The European Medicines Agency's decision allows the international partnership for microbicides to obtain approvals for the ring to be used in countries where it is needed the most including in South Africa. The South African Health Department says it'll start with the regulatory processes in preparation for the rollout of the Depivirin vaginal ring in South Africa. Professor Linda Gail Becker from the Desmond Tutu HIV Centre joins us now via Skype to share some insights into this breakthrough. Professor very good evening to you thanks for joining us welcome. Thanks, Mpiwi. Great to be here. Is this vaginal ring the panacea for HIV prevention? I wouldn't put it that strongly, Simpiwi. As you heard, um, the randomized controlled trial showed a 31% reduction in HIV. Um, but importantly, it, it, it is an addition to the prevention toolbox. And even more importantly, it's something that women can use themselves. So as stated, it is a vaginal ring. Uh, to be inserted by women for use for women, um, and so really a very important addition to our prevention toolbox. And this ring, I understand, is for use by women uh, from the ages of 18 years or older in developing countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, we know that the rate of HIV prevalence is particularly in the age group of, of women as young as 15. I mean, why the target, I mean, why the particular emphasis on the age group 18 years or older uh, when we know that uh, young girls are vulnerable as well? Yes, I think, you know, we need that uh, research to be done. And in fact, there is a trial underway at the moment in younger women looking at uh, young women trying both oral pre-exposure prophylaxis or the vaginal ring and describing uh, their preferences as well as uh, conducting safety studies. But the randomized controlled trials were done in women 18 years and older. So this first licensing uh, enablement is for adult women. But as you suggest, it's very important that as soon as possible, uh, we try and roll the age down and include women who are sexually active um, and, you know, and regardless of their age, make sure that they too can benefit from this prevention modality. Take us through, Professor, how this ring works. Well, it's a very interesting, um, fairly flexible ring, uh, you know, fits into the palm of your hand very easily and it is infused with this uh, antiretroviral agent called depivirine. It's a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor and once the vaginal ring is inserted into the vagina, it sits very comfortably over the cervix, the woman becomes unaware of its presence um, and then slowly over the month, it diffuses the depivirine antiretroviral. Uh, now, if a virus comes into contact via the, uh, the vagina, uh, the depivirine is on site and on hand to stop that virus actually entering the woman's body infecting that individual. So it really is pre-exposure prophylaxis on hand, ready to work, should that person come into contact with an HIV virus. And then every month, the young woman can remove the ring and insert a new ring, and, and she can forget about it for the next 30 days. So that's the other wonderful thing about this, is it becomes a long-term uh, prevention modality that can be just used once a month uh, inserted and forgotten about. Uh, are there any side effects? I mean, for those who've been using it, uh, what kind of feedback have you been getting? I think there's a, there's a certain amount of time to get used to it, um, particularly because in this country we haven't had much access to vaginal rings. There is a contraceptive vaginal ring, but that has not been rolled out in South Africa. It is used in other parts of the world. So there's a little bit of getting used to it in the first place. Uh, but once 
young women have inserted it, got comfortable with it, they really do take to it. Um, and we, because it's topical, because the antiviral isn't actually going into the body, there are very few side effects. Um, so that's the other wonderful thing about this. Um, and, it, you know, as mentioned, this there is slow diffusion, diffusion over the next month. On rare occasions, it, it, it may fall out, um, but at that point, it can be washed and, and uh, you know, cleaned and then reinserted. So really, very low maintenance um, and something that I think young women around the country may be very interested in looking at using. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think like contraception, the more options we give women, the more likely they are to find something that really fits their lifestyle and is something they want to use. Is it uh, tailor-made for every woman or a, a specific, uh, you know, a specific group of women who don't have any underlying ailments? Yes, I think we, um, you know, it, it in its first instance, we have used it in women aged 18 all the way up to 45, 50 um, and found no reason not to include that range of women. As I say, we now have a study where we're looking at women younger than 18. Um, you know, I think if somebody has a sexually transmitted infection or there is a, a, a problem in, in the vaginal area, then that young woman needs to seek medical care anyway. Way. Otherwise, there are very few uh, contraindications uh, to using this intervention. And Professor, the fact that it is piloted in sub-Saharan Africa, is it an indication that it's tailored for African women or um, are there any plans to roll it out across the board, uh, maybe, you know, ar around the globe, as it were? Well, I, you know, I think in the first instance, um, IPM's uh, mandate was to try to get to those areas where HIV is most burdened. Um, and for women, that is Eastern and Southern Africa, without doubt. We, we you know, we unfortunately carry the burden uh, for young women around the world. So I think the first target is to get it onto this continent and in, into women uh, here. So that's very exciting and perhaps somewhat unusual in this day and age that something's targeted for our region in the first instance. I think, though, uh, over time, there's no reason why women all across the world uh, may not be interested in this as a modality but i think the urgency is to get it here where the problem is greatest uh, where the need is greatest and obviously all of us and i hope i speak for women on this continent we're looking forward to hearing that the access plans are moving forward urgently because i think this is uh, something that ca can be uh, of important progress for women uh, on this continent Women obviously need choices of discrete HIV prevention tools that they can initiate. So is this ring discrete? Can men fill it or can the women partners or can the users partners fill it? Well, the idea is that, um, you know, should women be in a position where it is not possible for them to discuss with their partner, then it can be used discreetly. What we have found through research uh, on the continent and over time is that often a young woman wants to discuss uh, her methods of prevention with her partner. And so very often, although initially the ring may be used discreetly, and in those cases, certainly partners have not been aware, um, over over time, the nature of the intimate act, etc., young women do uh, disclose to partners. And again, then partners are somewhat surprised uh, that that the ring is, pr is present. Um, and so, you know, I think, again, we have options here, although it's very nice if, part if partners can do something uh, with full communication between them, that's great. But in those instances where young women are not in a position to disclose to a partner, then I think it's very important important to have a discreet, a user-controlled methodology for, for those young women. So for maximum prevention, can it also be used uh, in conjunction with other uh, preventive measures uh, like a condom, for instance? 
Correct. Um, you know, that certainly gives belts and braces. Um, and again, where young women are able to ask for and and see that male condoms are used, that's also to be advised. Um, obviously, when it comes to preventing sexually transmitted infections, that's great because this intervention will not prevent uh, other sexually transmitted infections. I, I saw pictures on the screen of female condoms where young women can get a access to female condoms, this can also be used in conjunction with the ring. Um, you know, too often, though, in our communities, condoms are, are not easily used. Um, and so this is where this discrete modality becomes very important. We do not advise that it gets used with uh, oral PrEP, because that obviously is also an antiretroviral agent. So that would not be advisable. Uh, but certainly with with other barrier methods such as condoms, uh, that is is to be advised. One to prevent uh, STI, secondly to prevent uh, pregnancy. You know, Professor, certain cultural nuances will obviously come into play as this will be rolled out or it will be piloted in the African setting. And do you know that in some societies um, they frown upon HIV or, or rather, yeah, HIV preventive measures. So do you think that this will be embraced by all sectors or by all societies? You know, I think like any new biomedical technology, we do have to be absolutely aware that cultures, norms, uh, society, uh, the collective plays an important role. So again, uh, this is something I think we have to do with full uh, participation of communities, making sure that individuals get good information, uh, factual information that they can use for their lives. Uh, and then we need to make it a, a available. And then, you know, I think young women need to give it a try and see how it goes for them. Um, and I think, you know, like so many other modalities we've brought in, we have been able to get over the hurdle of becoming familiar and then using something uh, to make a difference. So I think, you know, uh, that that is the usual ingredient. It comes with the need for information and, and good, clear, unambiguous messaging. And I think if we do that, then I don't see why uh, something as important as this cannot be offered to young women in a country where HIV plays such a terrible role uh, in everybody's lives already. And now that the European Medicines Agency has already given the green light to this ring, what's the World Health Organization's position on this? Well, my understanding is this really does enable the World Health Organization to move ahead, and they have already been engaging. Um, uh, I know that the prevention arm of the WHO is is excited about this as a new modality. Um, I think very soon we'll see recommendations and uh, guidelines, and hopefully that will inform countries such as South Africa and other countries in East and Central Africa uh, to adopt and move forward forward uh, smartly. My understanding from the International Partnership for Microbicides is that they've already started production of the ring. Um, and so hopefully, you know, very soon we'll be hearing what the next steps are towards implementation and scale up. All right, uh, Professor Linda, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your update. Thank you for having me, Simpiwe. Professor Linda Gale Becker from the Desmond Tutu HIV Center joining us via Skype. This is the Global SA.